much in line about usury, about the idea of debt forgiveness, um, about how the state owns us more or less because of these things and the difference between the state and the human being and, and who's in charge kind of thing. So on those many points, I think we agree on a lot of things. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I, the, the video that I had, uh, did what, what is, you know, it's effectively what is, what is scriptural government. And um, that's uh, what the, it's, I, you know, I don't just try to find, uh, find things I just want to debate people over for no particular purpose. It's for, no, it's for the implementation. So, like, we both agree that uh, uh, usury is a sin, and um, we both agree that uh, a debt cancellation should be enacted because all these things will destroy Shylock's ability to uh, uh, dominate us. And, Correct, right. Um, and all the cultural Marxism stuff, like uh, the gun grabbing, uh, the race baiting, all of that stuff goes away because it's all being fomented through the, the media and the uh, institutions, the courts and universities. And it's because of their grip, the synagogue of Satan's grip on the uh, money power. Um, you no, know, absolutely. It's, 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 I've always stated, I always thought that, the, um, that money... And currency, especially through the Federal Reserve, is basically the Holy Spirit of their world. I mean, that's how they get things done. They're materialists, and they need material spirit. And the only material spirit, such a thing, if you can follow my metaphor, would be their currency and their money and the manipulation of money and debt. Yeah. So that's, that is their Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's something that touches everybody, and yeah. it's basically it, it enables them to leverage the labor of everybody on the earth that's participating in their, you know, which is the major, you know, except yeah, for some tribes us. people here and there. <laughs> right. Well, in uh, two thousand eight, in two thousand eight, if you'll remember, basically, they literally emptied our coffers of the United States into their pockets and didn't even have to tell them where they put it. And this is why, you know, I, I supported Ron Paul for two two terms when he tried to run against, you know, the nitwit Republicans. So uh, the fact of the matter is that, that when any of these guys talk about our financial crisis, especially in this fake COVID thing, they're so full of crap because basically they could they could have written a check in 2008 and paid everybody's mortgage, which would have been cheaper than giving it over to Goldman Sachs and and so forth and you know they weren't going to let them do that they weren't going to let us free from our bondage oh yeah 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 it's so it, it's just they, they just do whatever the opposite of the bible says so <laughs> uh, the bible says debt cancellation that means they're going to go take drive you deeper in debt well i wanted to ask you about debt cancelling because I, unfortunately i made the mistake of allowing three of my children to go into it for college and when your kids grow up, I don't think you would do it. But my advice to anybody else watching this, don't do it. Let them find a community college or don't go to college because it's been torture on them, torture. And then in my oldest, who was just barely getting by, excuse me, I don't know if you can hear the road noise. Harley's going by. Ugh. So uh, my oldest, who had um, a student loan, was getting by on his restaurant job. And in Pennsylvania, restaurants got closed down by our Jewish overlord wolf oh he, he's a jew our governor yeah. oh yeah oh, really? I, I didn't know that. <laughs> he farts yarmulkes man <laughs> he's big time <laughs> <laughs> oh and our well our health secretary is a transgender just for yeah yeah i've seen that i, I had posted that meme now uh, this 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 guy is the one in charge of our health and the health of my children in our our state just think of the demonic insaneness of that but to get back to the point, so student debt is large upon my mind, even more than mortgages. Because at least with a mortgage, you're sitting on a property that has some value if you can make it through. And there is there is evidence that you can't actually pay off a house mortgage if you work your ass off. You might make it. But student loans, they're set up to never be paid off. Those are loan shark loans. Those are the loans that the inner city gives the guy, paycheck loans. And they should totally be more regulated. They should be totally forgiven and reset if you're even going to have them at all. And so this is where, you know, I have a personal reason against these things because they've enslaved my children at my 
great shame and I'll answer to God for, for not being prudent about that. But in the meantime, I'm thinking this thing's going to solve itself. I think we'll have debt forgiveness because they won't have any option. Nobody will have any money to pay their damn uh, ties. What do you think about that? Do you think there'll be a, a debt crash? Uh, I, I mean, their, their big agenda is to, um, you know, end the petrodollar status of the U.S. and then move it east. So yeah. w when I, that occurs, it's going to be uh, our, the standard of living in the West is going to drop massively. Um, maybe. Maybe. Don't, do you have any faith in the ingenuity and hard work of the American people? Not all of us, obviously, looking at what's going on in the inner cities, but the general populace you we are blessed with many resources in our country we are blessed with hard work and honest people like you and our myself and our families uh, well yeah yeah if you know if people i'm i'm always whenever i say that I, i'm just saying what their agenda is right as as soon as uh you know i mean we outnumber the the money lenders 7 billion to 1 so right. as soon as and and it's it's largely the Western wealthy nations that, you know, I mean, if you're to ask people in third world countries, what do they think of debt cancellation? They're all for it. You know what I mean? Like you, you don't get any argument. If, right. So if you go to poor, poor neighborhoods in the U.S., they're for debt cancellation. It's sure. just that uh, in order to affect that, you have to get because um, I, um, I, I promoted debt cancellation quite a bit up in uh, in Summit County when I promoted a local currency called Mountain where, Hours. Where are you located, Wayne? I'm sorry, I don't know. What, um, what state are you in? I'm in Tampa, Florida. But I, oh, I, you're I in Florida. In, okay. Yeah, they say I had 20 years in Allentown. Uh, oh yeah. Up, oh, okay. We're almost neighbors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm outside and, of uh, Reading, PA, so I'm a few minutes. I'm about 25 minutes from Allentown. Cool. Yeah. I was born but, um, in Hazleton. And so anyway, 20 years there, 20 years in Florida, and about 10 years in Colorado. I, I noticed the Pennsylvania accent. That's why I was listening. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway, but go, go ahead. You're, you, so you were saying you've been pushing this debt um, can't, uh, forgiveness. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, I, I, see, I didn't. Um, I wasn't a believer for the majority. I was just, I was agnostic. Mm -hmm. And um basically with the 2008 bank bailout nonsense right um i had money for my Outreach. pool business so i investigated um you know gold and silver and i knew that they had confiscated gold during uh 1933 with fdr and all that nonsense so i wanted to to and that's when i saw uh and i you know you could eat anybody could easily read this uh with the federal reserve uh the gold that was seized by FDR was turned over to the Federal Reserve. So it was turned over to the creditor. So whenever a creditor is seizing assets, that means the, uh, there's a bankruptcy and you're, the, you're no longer sovereign. So I, I, I knew then that the gig was up. Like I knew that there, uh, I have, my degree is in history and mm -hmm. that was something I never learned. And, and basically that's the case now is, is that, the United States isn't a sovereign nation. It's it's a uh, own a subsidiary. Bank yeah, yeah, it's just it's, it's an yeah an own 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 subsidiary of Zionist Inc. I guess I don't know who else to call it. <laughs> right. So the, the, basically, because the 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 money lenders are it's the synagogue of Satan. Um, they have their morality that they enforce because they control the money. He, he, who, he who pays the piper calls the tune kind of stuff. Exactly. exactly. Um, and then I got into 9-11 and yeah. um, I'm a former Marine and, and mm. that, uh, that betrayal, knowing that these guys uh, deliberately take the well-intended uh, willingness of people in the military to serve. Like my, my whole family is uh, former Navy. And mm -hmm. um, my, my mother and father volunteered for the Korean War. My brother's retired Navy grandfather. Like just uh, so anyway, growing up, I, respect, the whole time, uh, everything was all about uh, your, your whole I identity is wrapped up into that, particularly with the Marine Corps stuff. Sure. And then um, knowing that these devils uh, uh, sacrifice well-intended people and and betray them and, and deceive them 
to go shed Continue blood on behalf so. of these fake wars, it just yeah. it makes you like core angry. And I just committed my soul that I'm gonna bring him to justice. <laughs> yeah. Well, my and, brother, uh, on, on that note, you must you must have to let go and let God. God will get justice on these people. There's no. That's a stream part of our faith. We're fine with. I don't want to be the judge of another person. I got my own issues. God's going to judge me about. But I agree that we thirst for the judgment of God. We thirst for it. We yearn for it. And I think, and many times, these crises are sent by God to make that yearning grow in our hearts. So we have to, we have to struggle on. I guess I, it is hard. I mean, yeah, see, and, that's and, what, and, the, and the judging issue is going to be that that i think is i I disagree with that i think we are to judge there's a book of judges no no no. we can judge personally as well i'm talking about the judgment the judgment of our eternal souls of each of these individuals and us Uh, i understand what you're saying no we're allowed to judge personally too i get that and we can run our lives based on that judgment because god gave us an intellect and and a soul and a piece of the holy spirit to share and so we can see an evil person and we can judge them as evil that's not, I wasn't saying, let's not judge. It's not nice. It's not Christian to judge. I'm not saying that at all. <laughs> okay. So what I'm saying is the thirst for ju- the judgment of God on people is a good thing. It's a thirst. Anything where we thirst for God is good. Wouldn't you say? I mean. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I, I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to, we're, we're the, the, our discussion is to be based on what's what's biblical government, and I believe biblical government is judges of tens, fifties, hundreds, and thousands. And and in that, I try because I'm I'm teaching my my own children that for them to be biblical judges, uh, starting off with being a judge of ten. So the the idea of that is it's local, it's tribal, and that means. Um, you know, in a tribal society, like think of the American Indians or the Amish, uh, if, if you are the judge of 10, those 10 people would know you your entire life. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And they would know that, that you're not a uh, emotional, overly emotional, that you're able to weigh evidence from both sides of any topic. Right. So, so whenever something comes along like, uh, like the COVID thing, mm-hmm. um, we should be judging, and, and because I, I'm, I'm the guide for my family, but I'm also the judge that I, before I weigh in on that thing, I want to investigate it because I want to make sure that I'm giving good guidance as a, a shepherd for people right. that, that follow me. And, um, and in order to do that, we have to, okay, you, you get the, you know, the government information, and they have government statistics, and then you have uh, the dissident statistics and the dissident science and then Mm -hmm. you you weigh both sides of that to see which is more credible and who which you know obviously the government side is financed uh by the synagogue of satan and therefore it's meant uh for tyranny and um so anyway it's it's easy in those instances but um you know just imagine in uh you know when society breaks down um that uh, you'd have to judge, and people would bring controversies to you with respect to a murder, or right. theft, or like a, here, here's like a, a for instance that I actually did this in my own uh, tribe, my own circle of local Christians, is um, we were watching a child, and I I I have like a mini farm here, and we had burned uh, leaves, and um, I let it I let it simmer. I don't put it out, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, that way it burns down to the ground closer so anyway uh, a child that we're watching uh, accidentally put her hands into it Mm -hmm. and uh, she burned her hands and went to the hospital and um so i was negligent um uh because i didn't protect the child and so the uh, uh the christians uh they actually uh sued me and i uh I used, I, I wrote them a letter citing biblical evidence that you're not supposed to bring a suit to a fellow Christian. No, you bring it, you bring it to them personally, and then you bring it to them with witness, and then you bring it to the, through the church, and then, yeah, a, a, I got a, you. A, yeah, so, so anyway, scripturally, there, you, there's a, a, a specific process for what you're supposed to do, right. and in the Old Testament, there is restitution. 
um, right. because if the, they did suffer an injury because they had they had insurance in the New had, Testament too, there's restitution. Just so you know, it's not just Old Testament. There's restitution in the New Testament too. They call it penance, uh, yeah. but but penance. But go ahead. I'm sorry. But, but in, anyway, like that's what we're going to get into is. It's the same. It, it, I believe the New and the Old Testament, it's the same thing. They're talking about the same thing all the way through. Jesus didn't create a new religion. No, um, no, I don't think he created a new religion. So, okay, well, we can talk about that then. So, well, you said there's no difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Now, I w I'm going to posit a hypothetical to you, and you tell me how they are different. Now, if you were to... Uh, if an alien force was able to use, I don't know, I'm just going to create a science fiction theory just to explain what I, I want to say. So they somehow go through the earth and they eradicate the new, they eradicate half the Bible, meaning the New Testament. They eradicate it. And they only left us with the Old Testament. Would we know the name of Jesus Christ born in Bethlehem? And the answer is no, obviously. <laughs> I mean, so there is a difference. The point is that I believe a, a Christian, uh, a faithful follower of God can live on the New Testament alone, but not on the Old Testament alone. So they need to each other. I, I'm not saying there shouldn't be an Old Testament. I'm saying if you were stuck on a planet or an island and you wanted, you could only have half the Bible, you want the New Testament because that's where Jesus Christ, who's the fulfillment of the Old Testament, is complete and explained and everything in like you just said, I agree with everything that's in the New Testament is simply a reflection or a uh, completion of the Old Testament. The whole point of the Old Testament was Jesus Christ. Do you agree with that, or is there some similar thought? Um, well, it, the, the New Testament's only about uh, a quarter of the Bible. Um, it doesn't matter what size it is. Truth is truth. Um, it's immense. So, so <laughs> it, it's, it's like the climax of a movie. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You, you wouldn't you wouldn't be drawn into the drama of the movie unless you knew knew all of the foundations. So it's like starting a book, like reading the last quarter of it, and have you, you don't have the full richness of the whole story. Because I'm you know I'm a believer. Um, I just I don't believe that uh, uh, Jesus created a new religion. Because I didn't the, say that. Well, that's I, I, what I, Catholicism so is. No, it's not, a new, it's not a new religion, is it? Is it not a continuation of the religion? Because uh, it has all it has all the earmarks of everything that the Old Testament church had. It has judges and bishops, it has popes. Everything that was in the Old Testament. Well, it, the, the Old Testament doesn't have Christmas, Easter, and Sunday worship. No, uh, that, that's where you're getting into the parts of where the church has authority to make things happen. That is in the old. That is in the New Testament. But the the first thing we have to discuss then, if you're going to use the Bible against the Catholic the ch Church, the Church is humans. Uh, the Church is the mystical body of Christ, according to Scripture. Uh, that's human. The being. head is Christ. The head is Christ, right? And its members are us, and we all have our roles to play. Isn't well, that, that in that's, Scripture? It's humanism. So I, I think that's where that's, that's not that's humanism. Where <laughs> How is that humanism if Christ is the head of the church? Uh, well, you, you're basically because uh, we, we're getting into the judges issue. So it comes down to how do we establish uh, truth? And I, I use the Bible at its face and says out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. That's how you establish truth. Um, so that's how yeah, you do it. What's your status of the New Testament? You seem to lean only mostly on the Old Testament for your structure for the for the government. Is that a true statement? Um, no, I think they were they were implementing it. So I think I, I agree with you that you and I are in agreement that I, I believe the implementation in the New Testament was the not a new church, but the crowning glory of the Old Testament church, the becoming of the true church. Okay. That's what Catholics actually believe, by the way. They don't believe a God Jesus created a new religion. Uh, well, a Jesus, the, the, the Catholic Church did. Like some, basically, the, the doctrines of man, uh, which I believe that's what Sunday worship is and Christmas and Easter, um, I believe those are all doctrines of man because they're not found in the Bible. Um, yeah, but the Bible, the Bible was given to you by the Catholic Church, so how do you square that? 
that's just who was in charge at the time. Because there's there's well, how, books that are not in the, Catholic, in the canon that, uh, like the Book of Maccabees, for instance. Um, well, with all due respect, they were re removed in the 1500s. So the church existed with those books for 1400 years before the Reformation so-called removed those books. We didn't remove, we didn't, we didn't put them in. We didn't say in 1500, let's add some books to the Bible. That was the Bible. That's the history of the Bible. Now, you, you said you had a degree in history. Mm -hmm. What is your understanding of the history of the, phys of, of the physical book? Not, you know, let's stick, go outside the free, let's go outside the free, free thought of within the Bible. Let's ask ourselves in the historical record, because Christ incarnated, he became part of time, time in, into our lives. You believe in Jesus Christ as God, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I wasn't insulting you with that question. It's an important question because it, it could, you know, go either way. I apologize if. No, I'm a, I'm a believer. So, uh, yeah, it's just the, the Christ difference. Christ is God, is, right? What? Christ is God. Is Father, Son, Holy Spirit? It's the the it's, same thing. Okay, so that's fair. So we're both on agreement. So in history, outside the Bible. There's a history that is trustworthy, and that says that Jesus lived in this age, uh, the apostles lived and died in this age, the church began to grow in this age, et cetera, et cetera. Do you accept that history as true? That there are ages? I, I... Oh, no, no, no. No, that there's a history for the church in history. Like, we exist in history. We, are not, we weren't landed by aliens and poof, and there's a church. There's an actual timeline that you can follow. For our church, you agree with that? Uh, yeah, I just, I, I just believe that it was subverted earlier. Like that's fair. I knew we'd get there. That's fine. I totally, I get where you're going to say that subversion happened. Okay, that was the whole premise of Luther's uh, revelation or uh, revolution. I call. Um, that was his whole premise. So, my problem is, with that theory is, when did the church go wrong? In the timeline, you're a historian. You've said that. Apparently, you have a degree in history. You said, mm -hmm. so where in history did the church go wrong? What year? Uh, as soon as they started taking on the traditions of man. So Jesus That's and circular. Mark. Here, my brother. That's a circular argument. I need a date. I uh, I would say like at at the minimum. I don't, I don't know. I, I guess you could say immediately. There's in in the Bible itself. They there's they had a uh, there's antichrists then. Okay. Um, there so are, they're they, already like Paul was rebuking people for you know from from straying from the faith. So like it was happening in, immediately. So it just uh, I think in, in order to make this a focused discussion, it's the the way I anticipated doing this like. Is that the focus of where we're at right now? Is that uh, we're completely being uh, destroyed by this system? Right. So what do we do? And well, I say well, we, we. I have to establish. Employ listen, I, ha I have to establish this argument so we can go forward with that answer because I believe. Now my assertion is, and you can argue against me later, but my assertion is that you're reinventing the wheel. That all the mechanisms that you wish to have, that I agree with you, we should have. I agree with the whole idea of judges and local uh, governance and Christian rule. Okay. Well, you're and a papist, I, though. No, we'll get to that. <laughs> all right, don't be rude. Now I didn't call well, you. That's any. what it is. That's that's I not a rude word. A papist. <laughs> okay, a fair enough. I'm a papist if that's what you want to say, but. All I'm saying is I have to establish this timeline because I believe you're I want you to succeed. And I know you find that hard to believe, but I do. I want you to succeed because I agree with your premise about what kind of government we really should have. But I think as a Catholic, so this is what we'll debate today, is that you're reinventing the wheel, that you have a mechanism at your hand if you would only take it. Now, again, so you said your answer. Is this fair to say your answer is that the church so-called went astray almost immediately? Like immediately, so that would be years. So the Gospel of uh, the Apocalypse is written somewhere in the 70s after Christ's ascension, right? So we can agree on that date. So you're saying after the Apostle uh, John dies on Patmos, the church almost immediately goes and, and 
goes astray. Yeah. Okay. Your problem is that you want to use the scripture as your authority and it, your canon, which is the canon is the, um, what is the canon is the, uh, basically, okay, I'm sorry. It's the, uh, the page that tells you what is Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and all the gospels or all the epistles. That's the canon. It's written. This is, you know, it starts Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, I guess the Acts, no, the, yeah, the Acts and so forth, so on. That was established by a certain entity in the year, not until the year 397. Before that, you remember when Time Magazine and the Science Channel and the History Channel were crapping on our faith because they were trying to come out with the gospel of Judas and the gospel of uh, a woman, I forget, I, uh, Mary Magdalene or something. They, were, they, they had all these weird gospels that they said were historic to the time of our, of Christianity that were suppressed by the evil, you know, white church. And my, my point is all those gospels have very evil things to say and the world wanted to believe them. So back in those days, the church had had all these writings and some guy from Cleveland could have read in a letter and said, Hey, this is from St. Paul. Boom, put it in the book. You know, I'm just making something up to be facetious, but my point is somewhere you had to respect the authority of some outer Bible, uh, exterior from the Bible authority on Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And without Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we don't have our faith in Christ. We don't have the knowledge of it. If it's a Bible alone uh, situation. Um, I, I don't understand the, uh, I'm, I don't believe that, you know, I believe that there's corruption in the Bible. Like, so, uh, you know, we can the do Bible's infallible, uh, without no. error. No, the writings of the Bible have, have fallacies in them and errors. Yes. You believe that? Okay. My, okay. That's fair. So my question then to you is how do you know which is which by whose authority do you decide which is true and which is false? I, I try to rely upon two or three witnesses. So, so basically, if you have a position, like, for instance, the Catholics will say the, the verse where uh, uh, Jesus says, I'll, I'll build my church upon you, Peter. Mm -hmm. You're the rock, and I'll build... I, I forget how the verse goes. It's, it's so, so, so anyway, <laughs> Catholics use that as the, to substantiate that uh, uh, Peter was the first pope. And I disagree. I believe that the biblical government is from the Old Testament, judges of tens, fifties, hundreds, and thirties, uh, uh, thousands, uh, because there's there's uh, two or three witnesses. There's scriptural witnesses to evidence that. And Jesus, when he was feeding the uh, five thousand, he organized them into fifties uh, and hundreds. So he was still well, organized. brother. That's Th those are all wonderful and beautiful poetic ideas that you have. My question is, how can I authorize them? Because they're still, in the end of the day, your personal opinion. Are they not? In other words, the Catholic doesn't agree with personal opinion. They're not. They don't accept that. They I'm believe not using in authority. My I'm using. I have the verses. Uh, I can read. Yeah, but the those verses. are. Yeah, but those are your opinions of the verses that you're reading. In other words, that's how you define what it says. For instance, you brought up. That Jesus, that Catholics use that Peter was the first pope. Now, you know, these vague terms can make things hard to discuss it with you. A pope is simply like me calling you dad. What he really is, is the vicar of Christ on earth is what Catholics teach. I'm not asking you to accept it. I'm just so you're, if you're going to debate a Catholic, you should at least use proper terms for what they're actually teaching. Not a vagary called the pope. What we believe is in the vicar of Christ. And a vicar, a vicar is like a, um, what you would call a, um, at an embassy, an ambassador. That's the definition of the word vicar. So he's an ambassador for Christ. He doesn't have the authority of Christ except through the words that Christ gives him to speak. That's what Catholics teach. Now, as far as Peter being the rock, Peter, that's not the only thing we lay that foundation on. All right. And again, we're being circular because you still actually haven't answered my question about how can you disrespect the authority of the Catholic Church while respecting its book, except you did answer that you feel that the, the Bible has errors in it, which begs the, which is a, it doesn't beg the question, that's the wrong term. It, 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 it asks the question then, well, then who can decide where those errors are? 
and who is authoritative to do that, which is basically what the Catholic Church did in 397. They said, that's an error. That's not from St. Paul. We can't put that in the book. And I, what authority did they use to do that? They used the authority of the keys of, of the kingdom given to Peter. That's in that same scripture, by the way. So you, what you're saying is that is an erroneous writing of the scripture where he says, I give you the keys of the kingdom and what you, Peter, he's speaking directly to Peter, you, what you, Peter, bind on earth will be bind in heaven. That's a pretty powerful thing to give a human being who's fallible and, and evil and wicked like we all are and sinners. So how do you give a sinner the ability to bind heaven? Um, so I think the best way to proceed with all that is, is that we, we, we have to have some basis for truth. Agree, and, and I agree that it need to have two or three. I'm I'm using Jesus's own words out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. So yeah, how do you know he said it? What? I, I'm not being smart ass, honestly. How do you know he said it if you believe, or how does another person know? I know you know, and I know. We both agree that he did say it. Okay, but according to your theory, if there's errors in the Bible, how does Joe Blow down the street know that he said it? Because he's going to well, say, "Well, we I, have think, to go I think that's somewhere. an error." Yeah, um, no, I understand. Um, I well, see. Catholics actually believe, against all the prejudice against this, that the Bible is without error, that every word, jot and tittle that is in it, is inspired of God and therefore without possible error. I mean, it's it's easily proven that it's not true. Um, okay, prove it. Okay, in. Um, uh, in Luke 4, 18 and 19, Jesus reads from the scroll of Isaiah 61. Luke 14, you said? Uh, Luke 4, 18 oh, four. And, and 19. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Well, he reads from the scroll of Isaiah 61. Okay. So if, if he, he's reading from the Old Testament, he's right. in a synagogue, he's we reading. Well, we have if, no problem if, you, with that. if you look at the New and the Old Testament version of the exact same thing, they don't match. Well, according to who's... See, now we're going to get into a problem of, of, uh, of um, and, uh, Bible versions. So we got King no, James. No, I'm saying in the same version. So if you open the King James and you look at... Yeah, but I don't accept the King James is my point. Well, whatever. You, you, whatever version you like. Well, it's not about liking. It's about which is authoritative. Oh, come on now. Just pick one. You, the one, whatever one that you said, they're perfect. So whatever one you think is perfect, if you read Isaiah uh, uh, 61 and Luke no, 4, 18 and 19, they don't match. So it's, it's Luke 4 or 14? I'm sorry. Luke 4, 4. Uh, verses 18 through 19. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, wherefore he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to, he's quoting Isaiah here, he says, right? He's reading. He's not quoting. He's reading. Well, that's what I meant. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and the book of Isaiah, the, let's go to 17 just so we get context. And the book of Isaiah, the prophet, was delivered unto Jesus. And he, as he unfolded the book, he found the place where it was written. And Jesus is God, by the way. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, wherefore he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the contrite of heart, to preach deliverance to the captives, the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of the reward. And when he had folded the book, he restored it to the minister and sat down, and all the eyes in the synagogues were fixed upon him. And he began to say this to them, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. Okay. And you're saying what he quoted was erroneous? God? If you go now to the Old Testament in we'll have Isaiah to do it 16. for me because I only brought a New Testament in with me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You'll have okay. to go to the Old So uh, it, what are you saying? Is it it's a mistranslation? It's not, it's not what Well, it's, in one they say gospel, and one they say good news. In the Old Testament they say good news. Gospel is Greek for good news. What's the difference? There's no difference. Well, it, how can they, if it's the exact same thing, it should be the exact same thing. If he's reading the Old Testament, my, my point is, is that if they're, if they're different, they can't both be perfect. If it's absolutely Cor erroneous. 
Yeah, but the letter killeth that the spirit gives life. The idea is that the, the, the truth is sent a, sent true. And how do you know that the translation he wasn't handed by that synagogue didn't have have gospel? Well, it wouldn't have gospel because that's an English word, first off. It's an English translation of a Greek word. Right? And, and this all goes back to the history of the Bible. You you my position is if you find there's errors in the Bible, then you ha can't have it. You might as well just throw it out. You can't pick and choose because then you're deciding as a human being with error and sin in your own heart, unless do you feel you're without sin and infallible? Of course not. Of course not. I wasn't being sarcastic. It's an important question to make my point. I apologize. Don't be offended. Because I know that's not true about me, for sure, and any human being, right? So if that's the case, then you're using your own understanding to define scripture as this is good because my brother-in-law has the same opinion by the way so we've had this discussion he believes this part oh yeah that's true oh no but this part isn't true he doesn't believe jesus is god by the way because he says nowhere does uh, jesus actually call himself god mm -hmm. so it's, it's like and there's no trinity in the in the bible not as not as it's taught that we understand it that jesus is god and god is jesus and jesus is the holy spirit and the holy spirit is jesus uh, so anyway, my point is that if they differ, then... Um, I'm saying different. they don't differ, but you're saying they do simply because of the English word gospel was used and not good news. Well, if they differ, then they're different. So if, they're, if they differ, um, there's an issue there. Um, do, they, do they differ in the original translation, the Vulgate? I have no idea. Well, you should know. If you love the Bible, you should know the Vulgate. <laughs> So anyway, let's let's be productive with this because we are being productive. I love you, brother. This is there's nothing wrong with what we're doing. I, I told yes, you I do so not what, want to an, add. And I this don't is what annoys me with, with people end up debating for the point of debating and no, that's not what accomplished. Sir. You have people doing. that are dying all over the planet I, while I, while we debate over nuance. That they plainly are not the same. You can open any version of the Bible that I've looked at. And um, you know maybe there's some that are the same, but in the, the the dominant versions they list it as different. And the reason why it's important is the gospel is in the Old Testament. The gospel is in a New Testament thing. So the the, the good news you mean, which is what it means. Good news. That's it's all it the means. Same thing. Right. So people say well, it's the gospel good. of uh, the gospel of John or the, the gospel, have you read? They, they think it's only a New Testament thing, and it is not. The gospel's from the Old Testament. When, in fact, Jesus, when he quoted the gospel, he is reading from the Old Testament. He's reading. Well, that's all they had. There was no New Testament Bible while Jesus was around. I agree. But, yeah. but you know, I have, to, I have to give you pushback on the idea that I just want to debate for the sake of debating. It's not the case. I believe, you're, I believe what your agenda is good. I just think you're reinventing the wheel. And it's like someone saying, I got I to gotta run away from this burning building. I wish I had a way to do it. And I'm trying to say, well, there's a horse there. Oh, no, I don't believe in horses. Okay. <laughs> so the, so the Pope that, is the, the vicar of how many people? How many, he's the Vic head of a body of how many people? I don't know. How am I well, how many? There's Catholics say there's a billion Catholics on earth? It's irrelevant. If there's two of us, there's still the church. It doesn't matter. If it's okay. you and me, brother, that's All the right. church. So... I, I don't I it's just a numbers with game. That. It's not a democracy. It's a monarchy. That was my next question. Well, it's a centralized you. power, and I don't believe the Bible because why don't we? I think the best way to proceed with this is why don't you give all the evidence that you have that the government that the Bible is supporting is a vicar of a centralized power and the bishops and all that sort of thing. And I'll give my scriptural evidence of why I believe it's judges of tens, and the highest number is there for a thousand. So the Pope, I don't believe, has any authority, nor does anybody else, to have uh, anybody on the whole earth has the authority to, to be a judge of any number over, higher than a thousand. Yeah, but so, you're stuck because you've, you've accepted the authority of that same vicar, not the individual person, the office. You've accepted the, the, the ruling of that vicar from 397 by using the New Testament. I, I, it's fine if you want to get rid of the New no, Testament. The Old Testament exists. I mean, the, the Old Testament does not say Jesus Christ once, not once. And the okay. shortest scripture so the in the New Testament, Testament existed is, before 
Jesus. So th these no, th there's no. older. Sources. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. Jesus existed from eternity. Are you saying he he was uh, invented, or he came to birth, and there, he didn't exist until the the birth in Bethlehem? We've already gone over this. He's God. I agree with that. Okay. Well, you just said something different. I apologize, but go ahead. Maybe I'm just being okay. So well, these I books existed before the New Testament. The, the right? book of they Jackson existed Apostles before the Catholic existed. Church. So you're saying that the Old Testament. The only reason I have an Old Testament is because of the Catholic Church. It's not what I said at all. I said just the opposite. I said the only reason you have a New Testament is because of the Catholic Church. I understand that the the new the uh, Christ quoted from it, and so did all the apostles. Obviously, okay, it ex pre existed. Christ's incarnation on earth. I so get that. I, again, this this isn't this isn't productive. What I like to do is is if there's people that have jobs, like what do we do? My family's suffering. Okay. We're being overrun by communists. Okay. This is what, what we do, do we do? And what you're saying, do? oh, we wait for the Pope. We wait for all the bishops that have rolled up and shut down. No. What do we do? I have an answer. Would you like okay, to hear? What is it? Just keep yelling at me. Oh, well, you're just you're, you're being annoying because you're just nitpicking everything I want to say. So I'll be silent and you give all of your support for what you think I, the biblical church is. The annoyance is all on you, brother. I apologize if you're annoyed. Oh, well, I if you think it's the right thing. The, the Pope is the guy and we should be the then give all of your scratch. That's not my position. Evidence. I basically have to lay a foundation and you won't let me do it. Yes, I'll, so you I'll can, be silent. I'm, let's I'm do not asking you to be silent. You 10 minutes. You give me 10 minutes. I'll be silent for 10 minutes. Go. <laughs> Listen, I'm talking about a government that is a Christian government. And we have historical records of Christian governments that actually did a lot better than this Freemasonic Jewish-owned republic. And they had a single head. Now, the government of the Bible, according to the apocalypse, is a single-headed government. With Christ as king and all of us as his body and his members. That's all the evidence I need. That proves that God's structure is a single-headed thing. Secondly, I have all, all, this, all the thing here. First off, what you've done is you've done what typical annoying Protestants do to us, is you set it up so the Bible's only your evidence and never my evidence. Even though without us, you wouldn't have a New Testament. Because you accept the authority of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John being Gospels, even though you have no exterior authority to say so. Now, so what I'm is not saying that we wait on the Pope, because first off, what you don't know about me is I don't accept Francis is actually a Catholic Pope. He's an anti-Pope. He's a fake fraud that's spoken of in the, in the uh, uh, apocalypse of a lying usurper who takes over the Church of God or tries to, and, and God allows it, like in Job. So, don't put words in my mouth. I never said that we wait on the Pope. What I said was, you have within your grasp, a Christian monarchy would be better. A Christian monarchy would, has done in history. Christian monarchies have defeated usury, defeated the Jews. Christian monarchies have uh, given debt forgiveness to all their citizens. This has happened. So I'm saying is what we need is a Christian monarchy. There's it. That's all I'm going to give it. I mean, again, you've taken away the scripture from me. I'm not allowed to use it. Only you are because you know where all the errors are, but I don't because I'm a papist. You basically come at me with like anti-Catholic bigotry, which is not fair at all because you don't really know what Catholics believe. You think you do, but you don't. I, I'd be glad to. Uh, I'm not saying you have to accept that what Catholics believe is true. I'm saying at least judge them on what they really believe and not what you think they believe. And I guess that's all I got to say. You're, you're making the point that I'm taking the script. I'm just use all the scripture that you want to support your position. I, I haven't heard you cite any scripture, so go ahead and do that, please. You have to prove to me that the scripture is worthy and you haven't done it because you've said it has errors. But only you can define where those errors are. I'm not allowed to use scripture. You've already set me up that way. So I'm using just basic logic and common sense and a, a line in history. Do you believe that the Bible descended onto earth from an alien hand on a golden cloud 
or did it actually exist uh, in time and space where it was written down and given authorization by a certain body and sent forth into the world and printed and given out? You use the scripture, and first off, you really actually wouldn't even have the Old Testament in your hand were it not for the Catholic Church. It existed, sure, but it was, the Jews weren't showing it to everybody. Gentiles weren't even allowed to think about looking at it. So, yeah, I know I don't have any scripture to throw at you because it's irrelevant. You won't accept my scriptural evidence anyway. I have scriptural evidence that the Bible alone is not authoritative. Would you like to hear them? May I, may I present them? You have 10 minutes. You have, uh, I, I'm running a timer, so we're ah, um, seven see, and a half minutes in. That's not really Christian of you, but I'll take it. That's fine. Well, that's what a debate is. We both have time. Like, just there can be rules. It's okay. You have seven minutes. All right. If you want more time, it's all no, good. No, it's fine. All right. So here we read in St. Matthew 18. But if thy brother shall, and this is what we discussed earlier, but if thy brother shall offend against thee, go and rebuke him between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, they shall gain thy brother. And if he will not hear thee, take with thee one or two or more witnesses, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may stand, just to your point. And if he will not hear them, tell the church. And if he will not hear the church, assuming this is the final authority, let him be to thee as a heathen and a publican. Okay, there you go. There's Matthew 18, which is probably erroneous. Acts 20, 28. Take heed yourselves into the whole flock, wherein the Holy Ghost hath placed you bishops to rule the church of God, which he hath purchased with his blood, the church is not just some mechanical, political entity. He purchased a church with his blood. Therefore, it has some efficacy and eternal existence, according to Catholics. 1 Corinthians 12, 28. And God indeed has sent some in the church, first apostles, secondly prophets, thirdly doctors. After that, miracles, then the graces and healings helps governments governments, kinds of tongues, interpretations, and speeches. Church can establish governments, according to that scripture as I see it. Ephesians 3, 12. I hope you're writing these down so you can refute them. Ephesians 3, 12. In whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith in him. Wherefore, I pray you not to faint at my tribulations, for, oh, okay, I, I had to read that one above. I marked it wrong in my Bible. I apologize. Ephesians 3.10, that the manifold wisdoms of God may be made known to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places through the church. 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy 3.15, which is the one you probably know them best. But if I tarry long, that thou may knowest how they oughtest to behave themselves in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of truth. There, that's all I got. <laughs> you do okay. like me, right, brother? <laughs> yeah, I just, uh, let me go grab some water real quick. I'm so Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to dehydrate you. <laughs> all right. Um, are you a constitutionalist? Mm, depends what you mean. I believe uh, not. Yes and no, because it's a Freemasonic document. So I have to say that has errors in it. And obviously looking at how it's working right now. No, I would say the Constitution is pretty much a shitty document. It hasn't done what it's supposed to do. It hasn't protected us. But so, yes. You and, vote? Uh, yeah, I do. I may not in 2020. Because I don't think we'll have a country by then if we wait. But go ahead. Uh, do you believe man can create law? No. Okay. I believe only God can make law. And I, a man's job is to decipher it and apply it properly with Christ's help. Yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. Is, uh, I don't believe man can create law. I agree. So we're um, I believe the Constitution is uh, was was written by the synagogue of Satan effectively. Freemasonry is just Talmudism for Agreed. the boy. 
Yeah. There's no bigger enemy of Freemasonry on the planet than the previous Catholic Church to 1965. But go ahead. <laughs> yes. So you just so I'm clear, like, you, you believe the Catholic Church was good till 65? No. I, in 1965, a coup has occurred that has eclipsed the true church. Well, when, I mean, that, when do you think it went wrong? Like, I, I, it, does, it hasn't gone wrong. It's been, it's just like Jesus was thrown into the hands of Pilate. You see, the church has been thrown into the hands of the world. And by its betrayers in, in Christ's time, who were the Pharisees, in our time is what Catholics call the modernists. They are the new Pharisees. They've thrown Christ's body, the church, into the hands of Pilate to have okay, him crucified. When? I'm trying 19, to... I'm sorry. In, at that Vatican II Council, 1965. Yeah, somewhere around there. 64 started and then it didn't finish up. I, I, I'm, yeah, 65, somewhere around there. Yep. Okay. Um, so... Um, I, I believe that Jesus, like that, that his witness is that when he condemned the scribes and the Pharisees in Mark 7, 7, yes. um, he was condemning them because uh, they rebuked him because he said, why is it that you uh, don't wash your hands? Right. right. Uh, yeah, why do your disciples not wash your hands? And he right. says, uh, um, Isaiah spoke of you when, and he quoted Isaiah, um, you worship me with your lips, but your hearts are far away from me because you take the, the doctrines and the traditions of man, oh, man. Right. and they use that to replace the commands of God. Correct. And you do many things like basically he's saying is you're using the tradition Talmudism to replace the old, the Torah. Well, to be fair, there's no Talmud at that point. They're using Pharisee. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. That, that's what the, the Pharisees were the original Talmudists. It's, it's right. The same that's where thing. we get them. Right. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the and, and that was just over washing hands like that's like a well, relatively well, minor kind of thing compared to uh, not canceling debts or allowing well, okay. history or, or is this is this your can I ask a question, though, for a structural reason? Is this your 10 minutes where I keep my mouth shut? Um, so I don't interrupt. I don't want to be rude to you. Let, let me let me restart the the clock here. Are you so, want to, yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know because I'll, I'll I'll forget and I won't pay attention if. Um... <laughs> I mean, I wasn't actually going to do it that way, but I mean, I don't want to inter just, interrupt. It, it makes it concise so that like later on I can edit and like this is the debate part because that's what people that I you know yeah, inter interact yeah. with they want to see the debate they want to get to the the nuts of, and bolts of the issue. It's be nice. Um, to <laughs> as far as I've seen, I've never seen like uh, typically when you have like people that are Old Testament supporters, they're they're normally uh, Jews and they re reject Jesus. So you, I believe you have to have both um, because he was doing both. Like he was the the Word made flesh, so he right. embodies the Old Testament. So right. I think it goes wrong as soon as we start using the tradition of anything, anything that we make up. Uh, to replace the Word of God. So that includes the Constitution, that me includes Christmas and Easter and Sunday worship, that includes... Now i got to keep notes. <laughs> Go ahead. That includes the various feasts, you know what I mean? So if I believe you can't find it in the Bible, then it's, uh, it's, the tradi it's Talmudism, including voting at all. Like, the, there's no voting in the Bible. Um, okay. Okay. So let, let's start now. I'll go through it pretty quickly. Oh, I was allowed to say something during that time? Shoot. <laughs> I didn't know. Hey, I was hoping you'd have a little sense of humor about it. I really like you a lot, dude. I pray for you. I think you're a good dude. All right? So I was hoping we could have a little more sense of humor about it. I mean, I know we're in a crisis. Just, I'm, I'm used to doing a, a debate format is you get your time. I don't interrupt. And, and then you have a series, like a, a five minutes that you can uh, question the things. So I'll take notes with the things that you say. You take notes, and then you can uh, okay. I'm sorry, you know, challenge my assertions or, or whatever the case may be. So uh, I, I guess we really should have done that at the beginning, and that way we won't be tripping over all this stuff. Um, well, I don't think we're tripping. As my point is there's, there's lots of ways to debate a subject. I don't remember the apostles debating the Gentiles with 10 minutes you go, 10 minutes I go. 
uh, let's do notes and let's look things up. For time's sake, we just do these things. It's just a convention and like E. Michael Jones does it like it's it's all good, you know. Um, yep, e. Michael Jones will also rant for like, did you ever try to interview him? No, no. Have you interviewed, <laughs> <I> have. <laughs> have you interviewed him? Yes. Yeah, he's great. I support. I mean, so you just before we go to your time, E. Michael Jones hits on all these things that we're talking about in a lot of his books, especially uh, yeah. uh, the Jewish uh, Jewish revolutionary spirit, uh, 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 the uh, Baron Metal about usury. So yeah, yeah, I'm very familiar with his work because I, mm -hmm. I I really focus a lot on uh, usury abolition. Yeah, yeah. And, um, but he's he's a constitutionalist. He's a voter. He supports. So that. you you don't you don't vote. Is what you're saying? I don't blame you for it. I mean, what's the point? I do it. Just that's the my very the essence of what we need to do is establish biblical judges, which is local, and and there's no voting for them, right? No so, voting for the judges. You mean? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's how would you know what the consensus is? If I may ask, um, uh, well, okay, I'll re I'll read the, the the scripture on it. Okay. Um, okay. So. So okay, ten minutes start now. Okay. okay. That way I can edit it. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm a big mouth. I can't help myself. Uh, all right. So Jesus, when he uh, was challenging, being challenged by the devil in the, the wilderness, he repeated, repeatedly quoted the Old Testament. Uh, throughout the Bible, he quoted the Old Testament. Um, I want to get to... Okay, here we go. The Old Testament government structure. Exodus 18.21. So what was happening is uh, Moses, was, this was after they had left uh, Pharaoh and uh, Moses was in charge and everybody was bringing controversies to him and it was taking all of his time. So his father-in-law Jethro came to him and said, this, it's not right what you're doing. You're going to waste all your time and energy. Just are, you reading, are you reading scripture or are you paraphrasing right there? I'm, pa I'm setting up. Okay. Okay. So Exodus 18.21, More, moreover... Thou shalt provide out of all the people, able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. Okay, so that's one witness. Next witness, 18, uh, Exodus 18, 25 through 26. So Moses chose capable men from all of Israel and made them heads over the people as leaders of thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. And they judged the people at all times that they would bring difficult cases to Moses, but at any, any minor issue, they would judge themselves. Okay, two witnesses. Uh, next witness, Deuteronomy 1.15. So I took the leaders of your tribes, wise men, respected men, and appointed them as leaders over you as commanders of thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens, as officers for your tribes. Uh, Deuteronomy 16.18. You are to appoint judges and officials for your tribes and every town the Lord your God is giving you. They are to judge the people with righteous judgment. So we are to judge. Um, we are to judge and use the Bible as our civil law. Um, if we were, the, um, this is me paraphrasing now. So if, if we were to be, uh, you know, castaways on an island somewhere, or if you think of the first uh, pilgrims to the new world, um, should they be making up their own law or should they use, be using the biblical form of government? And at that time, they were using the Bible largely, and I'm not saying that they didn't make mistakes and that sort of thing, but generally uh, the first Europeans to come to the New World were using the Bible as their civil law, not just as... The King not, James Version. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not... I'm, I'm taking your word at that. I, I don't know which version. I, I heard the Geneva from some people or whatever. So, okay, fair enough. Um, um, so another witness toward that they, they applied and they implemented 2 Samuel 18.1. Then David reviewed his troops and appointed over them commanders of hundreds and thousands. 
All right, then you go on to, uh, prior to David, they had the book of Judges. And basically what, uh, what Yah, when he married Israel at uh, Pentecost in the Old Testament, this excuse is Excuse me, excuse me, Yah. Yahweh. Yah, Yahweh. Oh, that's your name for God. I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, I, didn't, I didn't get it. Sorry, apologize. So Yahweh uh, married his bride Israel at Pentecost. And this was a group of people who were uh, formerly Egyptian. So their whole lives, all they ever knew was Egypt. Their identity was Egyptian. Their entertainment was Egyptian. Their law was Egyptian. So all of the, the everything that they're familiar with was Egyptian in the same manner that we today think we're Americans. And I don't think we're Americans. I believe that we are the Israelites. And as uh, Jesus says, I have not come for the law except for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He's looking for our shepherd, our king, our creator. He's looking to regather his people, his bride, to marry again so that they obey him in the same way the Israelites obeyed only God. They no longer tithed to Pharaoh. They no longer used Pharaoh's money. They no longer paid Pharaoh's debts. They no longer rendered. They, no, they, they had nothing at all whatsoever to do with Pharaoh. Not that, that they didn't lament and uh, there were hardships, so they lamented how easy it was in the same way that uh, Americans will lament, you know, many of the conveniences of Babylon as they move closer and closer to God. Um, they'll lament the conveniences in the same way that the Amish gave up a lot of the convenience, and, but, but they weren't seduced by all the modern conveniences. And these conveniences have been used to enslave us. Yes. Uh, and make us dependent. They so, can and did, yes. Yeah. So uh, moving forward, and this is... Um, uh, Samuel was the last judge. And the reason that the, the, the judge system was ended was the Israelites demanded a king. And the Israelites were wrong. And, and God told them that they were wrong to want a king because they were rejecting him. They were re rejecting God by demanding an earthly king. And I believe that uh, effectively that's what the role of a pope is, is an earthly king. Um, that be you end up having a centralized power structure as opposed to this system where it's decentralized. So in 1 Samuel 8, uh, the scripture explains how God warned the Israelites, this is what's going to happen to you when you get an earthly king you're going to have tyranny because the king is going to, you know, take your people and centralize power. He's going to take your daughters. He's going to uh, take your men. So I'm setting up before I read the scripture um, because it's a, it was a warning to not have a centralized authority, to, to, have, to not have an earthly king. Um, okay, the warning concerning the king. Oh, I know, I know that scripture. You don't, unless you're reading it for the... Uh... I'm reading it for the audience. Okay. So the, the, the warning concerning <laughs> the king. Uh, so it's Samuel, uh, 1 Samuel 8, 10. So Samuel spoke all the words of the Lord to the people who had asked him for a king. He said, this will be this procedure of the king who will reign over you. He will take your son's and place them for himself in his chariots and among his horsemen, and they will run before his chariots. He will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and fifties, and some to do his plowing and reap his harvest, and to make his weapons of war and equipment for his chariots. He will also take your daughters for perfumers and cooks and bakers, and he will test, he will take the best of your fields and your vineyards and your olive groves and give them to his servants. He will take a tenth of your seed and your vineyard and uh, give it to his officers and their servants. And he will take your male servants, your female servants, and your best young men and your donkeys and use them for his work. He will take a tenth of your flocks and, uh, and your, yourselves will become his servants. Then you will cry out in that day because of your king whom you have chosen for yourself, but the Lord will not answer you in that day. 
Nevertheless, the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel, and they said, No, but there shall be a king over us, that we will be like the other nations, that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. Now after that heard the words of the people, and he repeated them to the, in the Lord's hearing. And the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to their voice and appoint them a king. So Samuel said to the men of Israel, Go every man to his city. So, so that's the controversy is the creator of the heavens and earth did, does not want an earthly king. Um, and that's why I believe the, the decentralized form of government that's advocated in the book of Judges is the scriptural government. And going in then into the New Testament to say that this just is an, an Old Testament, this is uh, something that Jesus did. Um, so Jesus organized his followers into uh, groups of 50. So it's Mark 6, 39 uh, and 40. Uh, Jesus directed them to have the people sit down in groups of in the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties. Uh, a second witness to establish truth, Luke 9, 14. For there were about 5,000 men, and he said to his disciples, make them sit down in, by 50s in a company. Um, my 10 minutes is up, but uh, Go ahead. Got a, a couple of seconds. <laughs> Go ahead. Is that Jesus is the perfect example. So the, the verses that, that I have is that we're supposed to copy Jesus. And what did Jesus do? Jesus obeyed the Old Testament in order to be sinless. He uh, observed Passover. Um, he observed uh, all of the feasts of the Lord. And uh, so Matthew 16, 24. Um, then Jesus said to his disciples, if anybody wishes to come after me, he must de deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So I'm right. using this to support my position that he's the perfect example. And if he observed Passover and if he observed uh, formations of uh, judges of fifties, hundreds, and thousands, then that's what we should be doing. So Matthew 20, uh, 25 through 28, Jesus called to himself and said, um, uh, saying that that's not a good example. Okay, first, uh, this is uh, Paul, first Corinthians uh, 11, 1. Be imitators of me, just as I am of Christ. Um, Ephesians 5, 1 through 2. Therefore, be imitators of God, as he loved his children. Walk in love, just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us. Um, so there's uh, three witnesses about, to, you know, to follow his example. I believe he's the perfect example. So... Um, all right, you're up. Well, there's no Catholic on the planet that would deny that Jesus is our perfect example. In fact, we use Jesus as our example that created this church because it was his church to create. It's what he created at that passage that's so misused when he said, Peter, thou out the rock, and I will build my church. He didn't say, I will build a church. I will build various churches. I will restore the church as it was known under David. He says, I will build my church, a perfect church, because it would be his body, his mystical body. That would be my answer to that. Now, what is the format now? Am I supposed to talk for 10 minutes, or can we go back and forth? Uh, so it was kind of like um, if there's something. So I'm saying that we should form biblical judges, all right, and, and follow. Right. The well, so I, mean, I took notes during your 10 minutes, so I'm going to address each of those. But you said a lot, so... I, this is what, what Catholics call the Protestant two-step. You throw so many things out there that it takes me eight days to respond, whereas you get to throw these little things out, and it's all good. It's called all right, the it will take ten minutes if you want. It's fine. <laughs> all right. I'm just saying. No, I can't. Not enough time. All right. Anyway. First I, I off, I've already, I've after, already, I'm basically listen. saying the biblical government is just— I get it. I get it. So let, that's you're not doing my time now, sir. Excuse okay. me. Okay. Ding, ding. <laughs> so— I've already established earlier that Sola Scriptura's, according to the Bible, is not true, but you continue to refer to it. So you've already rejected my biblical evidence against your biblical evidence, which is proof of my previous theory that you guys make up your own ideas of what the Bible means. We do not. We believe what the church tells us the Bible means. So Sola Scriptura's, I already answered with Scripture, but you continue to refer to it in your entire 10 minutes, which is fine. 
Now, with Christmas, you keep bringing up Christmas along with the hand-washing thing. Now, Jesus said to Peter, as according, this is what Catholics believe. What you establish on earth shall be established in heaven. What you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. That's a strong power to give to a, a sinful human being. And not saying he wasn't sinful. I'm saying God has a way of using sinful men. So my point is that Christmas and those holidays were done for the greater glory of God to spread the gospel, which is the only mission of the church. To spread the gospel, not set up secular governments or fight uh, usury or uh, to fight injustice in the world. The world is short. The world will die. The world would go into a ball of fire. We, this is a short. We are but sojourners here on the earth. So the only purpose of the church was to spread his gospel to the four corners. Obviously, there's not four corners on the earth to tell to a flat earth person. But to spread the word, the entire globe of the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ and his salvation for our souls. Because we are purchased at a price, right? So Christmas and all those things were done to establish the gospel around the world. It wasn't established to get people to wrap presents and make Christmas trees. That's just something that people did. Now, you, you oppose it, I guess it's like a Jack Chick comic book. That's all they have. They like to go against Christmas for some reason. And it's, it's not an evil violation of anything. It was done on purpose to bring the pagans into the church to hear the gospel, the story of Christ's birth. And the calendar that you're using today, this is what, 6-6, six, six, was established by the church. So to put a holiday on a calendar is in the church's authority according to Jesus Christ. Now, the form of government in Exodus that you bring up, this was before Christ. I, I, read, I read it the scripture before earlier that the church can establish government. So, obviously, it was not, you don't want a king in the Old Testament church because those kings don't have Christ in their heart. They don't have the power of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit hasn't come yet. Or did you believe the Holy Spirit existed all through? I mean, in the sense that it's known of in the um, New Testament, that the Holy, I will send the Holy Spirit. So uh, also, basically by establishing everything Old Testament, you're doing what Peter did, that Paul had to go and condemn him for, called Judaizing. He says, you know, you won't sit with the, the Gentiles because you're going back to the former ways. So that's called Judaizing. Um, according to the Catholic faith, you don't have to believe it. Humans don't choose the vicar of Christ. We don't use that as our standard. The Holy Spirit's called upon a conclave of cardinals, and they decide after much prayer, uh, unless you don't believe in the power of prayer, that they will be shown the proper bishop to establish as the vicar. And again, you don't have to believe that, but that's what we believe. We don't believe humans do it. We believe the Holy Spirit establishes a name. And obviously, since he's a sinner, it doesn't mean he'll, he'll rule properly. Uh, Israel, as you define it, is not old Israel's church. Israel is the church. Jesus Christ is the Israel. We are the Israel of God. We are why he came to establish us. To say that Israel of the former ways before Christ is the same Israel as today is a, it's terrible heresy. It goes against the blood of Christ, whose church he purchased with his blood on, on, on the cross. So it's basically saying, yeah, that was a good thing, but you really need to have to do it because we already had a church. We just need to reinvigorate it. Uh, Pope is not an earthly king. He's not a secular king. His only job is to make sure that the Gospels make it to the four corners of the earth. That's it. His job is not to run governments. He can tell a government, and in fact, I would, I would assert to you the reason we have such madness in our globe today is because the church stopped asserting its moral authority over secular governments in the 60s. And you can actually do a timeline from the 60s on. How did it look in America? How did things go in the world starting in 1960? Things went to hell in a handbasket fast. So in Romans 13.19, I know this much abused very much abused thing to make us servile to the state by certain Protestants. But Romans 13 does establish the idea of a king as an allowable form of government. And it says, let every soul be subject to the higher powers. For there is no power but from God and those that are ordained of God. 
therefore, which would be the church according to Catholics. Therefore, he who resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God, and they that resist purchase to themselves damnation. The, that's strong words. For princes, now these are secular princes, for princes are not a terror to the good work, but to the evil. And the context would be he'd have to be a Christian prince. Obviously, a communist prince couldn't be uh, a, a good for the world. Wilt, wilt, thou, wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise from the same. For he is God's minister to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, fear. For he beareth not the sword in vain. He's given the power to en en enact secular justice on people. For he is God's minister and avenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore he said, sub be subject of necessity, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For therefore also you pay tribute, for they are the ministers of God serving unto this purpose. Render therefore to all men their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom custom to whom custom is due, fear to whom fear is due, and honor to whom honor is due. And one final thing, I actually, I didn't take the minute to Google it, but you can. The, Paul asserts us to listen to his teaching, whether by tradition, word, or written. So there is a, such a thing as good traditions from God. And it, it, you would have to look at the Ark of the Covenant and what was placed inside as symbols of the traditions that God creates. So I think in the end of the day, you are describing what we need is a moral authority in the world, and that would be the Catholic Church, if it was not right now in the hands of Pilate. And there you go. I don't know if that's 10 minutes or not, but I don't care. <laughs>